this lesson, we'll cover the operation of the cutter. It will cover such things as loading the media properly, moving the tool head effectively, stopping the cutter's operation, and making copies. In the lesson on installation and setup, we covered briefly how to load the media. What we will do now is go more into depth about loading media onto the cutter. To help us understand this though, we need to examine the push rollers and the grit rollers, how they work together, and how to position them correctly. The push rollers have to be located so that the rubber wheel of the push roller is squarely over one of the grit rollers. It cannot be halfway on, as you see here. This is because the grit rollers are what drive the material back and forth. Thus, if the push rollers are not over the grit rollers, the material would not track properly. If one of the push rollers is not squarely over a grit roller, the cutter will display this message to alert us that one or more of the push rollers need to be repositioned. Something to keep in mind is that when the cutter initializes, it will use the position of the outside push rollers to determine the cut area width. The cutter then assumes that the outside push rollers are the edge of the media and will not allow the cutting tool to go beyond the push rollers. Therefore, it is generally best to position the outside pinch rollers so that they are, if possible, on the outside edges of the media. This cut area between the wheels can be expanded up to almost half an inch on each side if needed. This is helpful when cutting jobs that need the extra space. This way we can get the most from our media. To expand the area, simply go to the control panel and press the menu pause button. Press the three key for area parameters. Press the one key for expand. Then press the up arrow key to increase this value to 0.4 inches or close to it. And then press enter to accept the new value. Now every time the cutter initializes and finds the two outer push rollers, it will add close to half an inch to the total cut area width, giving us that extra needed area. With the larger CE6120 unit, there is an added middle push roller. This added push roller is very useful for several reasons. First, it's useful when having to cut the heavier materials. The pressure of the middle push roller can be set to a lighter pressure, eliminating any track markings caused by the pressure of the wheel. This is particularly important with certain tint medias. The lever for switching between the two pressures is on the back side of the push roller. When the switch is on the up position, it applies a normal pressure. When the switch is in the down position, it applies a lighter pressure. To load roll media, place it onto the stock rollers in the back of the cutter. Pull out about two feet of material, enough to place through the cutter, and insert the front edge through the opening in the back of the cutter. Then pull it through the front. Once the media is positioned properly, you may want to adjust the stock roller stops to align with the outer edge of the roll. This can prevent some medias from drifting side to side. Loading a sheet of media is a little different because the media is loaded from the front. When aligning a sheet of media, remember to use the rib lines on the front panel. To ensure proper tracking, make sure the rubber wheels of each push roller is positioned over the media as well as squarely positioned over a grit roller. Use the blue strips above. These indicate where the grit rollers are located. Align the rubber wheels of the push rollers so that the center point of the wheel is at least a half inch from the media's edge, both for the right and then the left wheel. Alignment of the media is highly important to obtain good tracking. When using a roll of media, the best way of doing this is by using the brake mechanism. This is found on the side of the stock roller tray near the control panel. When engaged, this prevents the stock roller and the media roll from moving. The brake works in this way. To set the brake, pull the mechanism out and move it backward. To release the brake, pull the mechanism out 
and move it forward. We'll keep it set for now since we're going to align the media. Once the brake is set, slightly tug the front end of the media to make it taut. This will force the media to align straight. Once the media is straight, take your other hand and bring up the media set lever. Once the media is loaded, make sure you release the brake. If you are loading a sheet that has a printed image with registration marks for the print and cut process, after loading the media, place opposite fingers on each of the two front registration marks, feeling for the front panel edge underneath the sheet. This will ensure the print is aligned straight on the cutter. Hold the media in place and bring up the media set lever. Once the media set lever is in the up position, the control panel will display three choices, roll one, roll two, and sheet. The cutter needs to know what kind of media has been loaded, whether it's a sheet or a roll. Let's select roll two current position by pressing the two key. When this option is selected, the cutter will determine the width of the media by finding the two outside push rollers. It will find the right push roller, then the left push roller, and stop there. Roll 2 can be used when there is something already cut on the roll and you would like the cutter to start at the current position. Let's go back to the initial menu of Roll 1, Roll 2, and Sheet and press the 1 key for Roll 1 front edge. This option will have the cutter do the same type of scan for the two outside wheels, similar to the Roll 2 option, except after the cutter has found the two push rollers, it will then find the front edge by retracting the media. This setting is best used when excess media on a roll has been extended out, thus preventing media waste. Let's go back to the initial menu of Roll 1, Roll 2, and Sheet again. This time we will press the 3 key for Sheet. When using this option, the cutter assumes that a sheet of media is loaded and will find the two push rollers the front edge, and then the back edge. Caution is needed when using the sheet option though. Don't ever select sheet if you plan to cut a roll of media. If sheet is chosen, you may find that all the media on the complete roll has been fed through the cutter in an attempt to find the back edge. After this, the cutter will display that it is in ready mode. This indicates that the cutter is ready to accept a job from the computer software. There will be times when the tool head needs to be repositioned. For instance, when positioning the tool over a registration mark when cutting a printed image, the tool will have to be moved to that location. The arrow keys can be used for this purpose. Pressing the up and down arrow keys will move the media back and forth. The left arrow key will move the tool carriage to the left and the right arrow key will move the tool carriage to the right. Keep in mind that the arrow keys can be used in combination with each other. For instance, if we press the right arrow key and the down arrow key, the tool carriage will move diagonally. You'll notice that the tool doesn't move that quickly. In fact, it moves slowly. To speed up the movement, hold down the arrow key and then press the fast key, allowing us to move the tool quickly to a new position. Once the tool carriage has been repositioned, pressing the origin key on the control panel will let the cutter know where to start cutting. When a new origin point is set, the cutter will cut everything to the left and behind the new origin, which is the area behind the tool carriage. When the cutter is cutting a job, there may be a point where there's a need to pause the cutting. For instance, you may want to change a setting that will improve the cutting, or there is a need to straighten the media. The pause menu key will stop the cutter immediately. Here is where the set lever can be released so that the media can be straightened. Notice that the cutter's screen will display these two choices. Continue, the first choice, will continue with the cutting operation. In this case, we've straightened the media, so we can press the 1 key to continue. Let's pause the cutting operation again. This time, let's choose the second option, Quit Job, by pressing the 2 key. 
Pressing this second option will display a second screen. This is where we can clear the buffer by pressing the 1 key. But if all we want to do is change a condition setting, the condition test key can be used for this. Once pressed, the cutting operation will be paused, but not immediately. It will continue to cut to find a good spot to pause. Therefore, when pressing this key, don't be concerned if it continues cutting for a moment. When the cutter is paused, the condition menu can be accessed and adjusted if needed. Then just press the condition test key again to continue. So remember, the pause menu key will stop the cutter immediately, allowing the media to be adjusted. And the condition test key will pause the cutter, allowing you to change the condition. When making copies, we often recommend that you use your software to make the copies rather than using the copy function on the cutter. The reason for this is that the software provides a better sense of how the copies will lay out. This is especially true when adjusting the spacing between the copies. There are times though when the copy function on the CE6000 can be more productive than using your software. Imagine for a moment that you want to make several copies of a certain design on individual sheets of vinyl. From software you would have to send the design for each copy produced, then after the copy is cut you'd have to unload the sheet, load a new sheet, initialize the cutter, send another copy from the software, and repeat that process over and over again. This would be a daunting task. When using the copy function though, you'd load the first sheet of vinyl onto the cutter, send one copy of the design from the software. Once the job is done cutting, you'd set up the number of copies and load the next sheet and the cutter cuts the next job. This is a much more productive method. So let's consider each step. First, load the first sheet and send the design from the software. Once it has completed cutting, press the copy key on the control panel. Press the one key for media change mode and press the two key to turn it on. This will return to the copy menu. We can set the number of copies by pressing the two key. We'll set it for three for demonstration purposes, although we could enter as many as we'd like. Finally, to start the process, we just press enter. A message to load the next sheet will appear. We can now remove the first sheet that has been cut and load the second sheet. Once the media set lever is latched, the cutter will immediately scan for the media and then cut the second job. Once the second job is complete, we can load the third sheet, latch the set lever, and it will cut the third copy. The process will continue until all the copies are cut. If at any point you need to stop the process, press the left arrow key. What's nice about this feature is it allows you to have an unlimited number of copies. As you can see, this is a great production benefit when you need to do multiple copies of the same design on different sheets of media.